not a reliable source. Go ahead. Not always .com. .com can be iffy. What's a big popular website people love to use that maybe isn't the most reliable but is really easy to get information on? Oh, I think we all know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, tell me what I'm talking about. Uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, I love Wikipedia. You can get any information you want in 30 seconds. Is that information correct? No. no. Not always. Is that information reliable? No. no. So what should I look for on a site that is maybe a .com, where it's like, uh, I don't know, is this reliable, is it accurate? What can I look into to figure out if this is a reliable source? Lauren. You can like see if the author is credible, you can check other sources to make sure they have the same facts. Exactly, so I can check. So if I have five sources, and four out of the five are saying one thing, do we think that last source is correct? No. Probably not. It, it might be, and it might be the other four are incorrect, but the likelihood is that the other four are correct, and that last fifth one it might be wrong. You said look into the author to see if they're credible. What would make an author credible? Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, so maybe if they have a degree in history, if they're a recognized historian, what else? They have like all their other like links to whatever else they wrote, like their degrees or something. On yeah, if they have a link to their degrees, or if they have links to other things they've written. Now, somebody can write a lot of stuff on the internet, right? I could go home every day and I could write blog posts about ancient Greece. Do you think maybe blog posts for me would be the most reliable sources to use? Mm -hmm. No, I could probably give you guys a little bit of information, but I'm sure there's lots of people out there who know a lot more about ancient Greece than I do who have better information, right? Mm -hmm. So even though an author might have a lot of sources, make sure the sources they do have are reliable. So these are the topics we're gonna go over and the groups I have placed you in. Again, it's a debate, so there will be two sides. If you notice, each group has four names. You will be debating with one of those other people in your group and against two of those other people. Again, you don't know who's your partner and you don't know what side you're on. So you really have to know all the information independently. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So the first hit topic is going to be, did Alexander really deserve the title of great? Raise your hand if you have no clue what you're talking, what I'm talking about when I say Alexander the Great. Oh, oh okay. That's good, but I don't know what you mean. Who can explain to me who Alexander the Great is? Ali. Alexander the Great was a Macedonian um, ruler who was a son of, I forget his father's name, but he was the son of a very wealthy king who ruled a lot, and he actually almost conquered the majority of the eastern of the eastern world. And he was he was taught by Aristotle. He um. He got the title of great for all his great conquests, and legend has it when he conquered everything, he cried because there was nothing left. I'm um, really glad I didn't put Ali on that topic because apparently he knows everything already about it. Great answer. Did that give you a little bit of background into who, who Alexander the Great is? Our second one. Which Greek philosopher has more influence on today's society, Plato or Aristotle? Michael, do you have a question? I bet you that group is going to be able to tell you a lot more information about Alexander the Great tomorrow. Find out about it. Third one, was Sparta's politi political structure more stable than Athens? So who can tell me what an oligarchy is? Go ahead, Lauren. It's a form of government that is ruled by not just one person, like a king or a dictatorship, but multiple men and or women. Perfect. So it's a small group that holds power, right? So that's how Sparta, Sparta was ruled. Athens was ruled by a democracy. Who can define democracy for me? Ethan had his hand up so fast, he was ready. Uh, it's where uh, the power is in the hands of the people because they get to vote on stuff and it can either be representative or direct. Yeah. Perfect, I like it. So there's different types of democracy, right? But it's where the people hold more power, right? Yeah. And then the the last uh, argument or debate is going to be which Greek contribution is more important to today's society, language and literature or math and science? So if you guys are like, I'm not 100% sure what she's talking about right now, that's good. That means that, that you have something to research and understand. <laughs> so the ancient Greeks have contributed to modern day language and literature in many ways and to modern day math and science in many ways. So the group one who's gonna be talking about Alexander the Great is Catherine, Hannah, Katie, and Sarah. So you guys are going to look at both sides. 
Was Alexander great? <coughs> was he not? Make sense? Yeah. Group two is Ethan, Kaylin, and Julian, and Jack. Well, you're going to be looking into Plato and Aristotle. A group of three is Michael, Akasha, Savard, and Karsten, and you guys are going to be looking into the two political structures. And the last group is Ali, Keaton, Lauren, and Ella, and you guys are going to be looking into Greek contributions. Does anyone have a question? <coughs> yes? How are we deciding which two people on each side of the group are doing what? I have magically already decided for you, but you're not going to find out until tomorrow because I want to make sure you have all the information. Okay, sounds good. So, I'm going to be posting this on Google Classroom, but I already gave you guys a source to start off with because I know we don't have all the time in the world and I didn't want you to spend me forever trying to find a first source. These sources that you're starting out with are reliable. So, if we look, we do have a .com but it's from Publishers Weekly. Does anyone, has anyone heard of Publishers Weekly before? <coughs> so when you look into this, it's um, the author of this source has written other historical um, articles before. So I know that this is reliable. I have a .edu. Who can see what .edu means? Tell me. Education. Yeah, education. So a college or a school has uh, published that. So, what I want you to do right now is to get your laptops out, get on new Google Classroom, I'm going to freeze this for you guys. recording sheet. I need everyone to get on that, please. So does everyone have that sheet up? Not yet. We're still making it. Yes, Alexander deserved great. On the other side, I'd say no, he didn't deserve the title great. And then I'd have put my notes for either side in those columns. Does that sheet make sense? Yes. I just put this on your Google Classroom. Get on this. Start on your starting source. And we're going to use the rest of the period to take notes. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Can you work on your group with this? So what do you think? Class, what do you think? Should we work on our group with this? Why, why would we not want to work oh, with no, our group? Never mind. Okay. Tell me why I wouldn't want to work with my group. Because now I'm going to say that you're not making an issue. Yeah. There's, two out of the three people are actually going to be against you on this debate. So do you want to work with those people? Yeah. No. no. So today we're just going to do independent research. Sounds good? Awesome. Innovations have a bigger impact. What Greek contributions have a bigger um, impact on us today? Mathematics and science, or liter or literature. And what information have you found so far? Well, uh, Euclid actually set the stage for um, modern geometry. Pythagor Pythagorean's Pythagoras the Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And how Aristotle made uh, many findings in zoology, botany, and uh, yeah. Perfect. Jack, why don't you tell me what topic you're working on right now? Uh, my topic is which Greek philosopher has more influence on today's society? 
Okay, and what kind of information have you found? Um, so one of them was Play-Doh. And then Play he's Play-Doh. And then he says, all of us, he said, want to crawl out of the cave of darkness and ignorance and walk into the light of truth. And that's for one. And how does that quote apply to your argument? Um, because we use that today. Like, we want to... Well, what do you think? What do you think that quote's trying to say? It's saying to, like, get out of your comfort zone almost, and then... And is that something we value in today's society? Mm -hmm. oh, I like it. What are we working right, on over so, here? So, uh, I'm doing uh, what Sparta's political structure, which is oligarchy, more stable than Athens democracy. And so far, I have that uh, Athens, like, they had a democratic... Uh, government, but during a time of many military battles, they decided to worry about uh, comfort and culture, while the Spartans had like a warlike attitude as its first priority, which uh, best met the needs. So. so who do you think was more stable right now? Uh, it's kind of both because uh, Sparta it was like equal, they were able to, uh, they were advanced fairly at their time, but then it was more important for Sparta to be more defense, like have more of a defense. So do you think maybe Sparta was more stable, but if you actually had to live back, then you would rather live in Athens? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Lauren, why don't you tell me what you're working on right now? I am working on finding Greek uh, language and literature facts so I can use it um, either in my argument or I can find points for uh, science and mathematics to use against it uh, for which one is better and which one has con uh, contributed to our society as we know it today. So what are you thinking right now? Which side of the debate are you leaning towards? Just as a person, I have I favor more science um, than language and literature, so I think I'm leaning towards that one because I have um, learned of these great philosophers and stuff that wrote books, but yeah, they're philosophers, not many of them are right. Um, but their mathematics and science uh, studies still show today, and we still use them today, and they were pretty accurate, and I find that pretty amazing. But what do you think about the fact that we still read books that were written in ancient Greek time, but we don't use the exact same science that was used in ancient Greek time? Thank God for modern medicine. <laughs> I, just, I think it's pretty amazing that we still read books from ancient Greek time. Um, I think they're amazing stories. I do, but I just don't find much interest in them. Um, and yes, the math, uh, mathematics and science from then may not always be accurate and we still don't use it, but we based a lot of what we know today from what they did back then. I like it. Have you stumbled across yet when they used to do ancient brain surgery? No, I have not, but now you've got me intrigued, so I'm going to look that up. Okay.